It's um sometime. Hi guys! Can you guess the title of my next video? Hurry up! Write your guess in the comment section below. Why do snakes have forked tongue? Just for fashion! Nope. Even though snakes have noses, they smell odors of their prey, ah. mate, or surroundings with the help of their tongue and vomeronasal organ. Each time a snake flicks its tongue in air, it collects odor particles. Then, when the tongue is brought back, the particles are transferred to the vomeronasal organ. This organ detects the odors and sends signals to the brain, helping the snake smell. Wow, that's interesting! Now, we know that when we see with our two separate eyes, our brain combines the two different perspectives and makes a detailed image of our surrounding. Similarly, because the tongue of a snake is forked, it collects odor particles from two different locations helping the snake understand in which direction oh. the odor is coming from and thus making it easier to locate the prey. Hmm. Oh. Why do mosquito bites itch? Because mosquitoes don't brush before biting. Nah. A mosquito doesn't actually bite. What? It doesn't bite? Nope. Huh? A mosquito sucks our blood through a straw-like structure called proboscis. A proboscis is made up of six parts. Oh. Out of the six parts, four parts are used to pierce into our skin and blood vessels and hold the tissues apart. Through the fifth part, called hypopharynx, the mosquito drops its saliva containing an anticoagulant. Anticoagulant prevents the blood from oh. clotting so that the sixth part of proboscis, called labrum, can easily suck up the oh. blood. Now, our immune system recognizes the anticoagulant as an invader, hence it releases histamine. Histamine dilates the blood vessels so that blood <laughs> along with immune cells can come to attack the invaders and heal the affected area. Oh. This histamine causes the itchy feeling. <laughs> Why do we breathe through one nostril? No idea. Our nostrils have specialized tissues. At a given time, these tissues are swollen in one nostril while they are shrunk in the other. Hence, when we breathe, air passes easily through the nostril in which the tissues are shrunk. However, due to the swelling, very less amount of air slowly passes through the other nostril. Thus, it seems as if we are breathing through one nostril only. <laughs> However, after some time, the swelling and shrinking in the nostrils reverses. This breathing pattern is called nasal cycle. Hmm. Nasal cycle is beneficial for us. But how? Some odors are detected better in fast-moving air, while others in slow-moving air. Thus, with fast-moving air in one nostril and slow-moving air in the other, our nose can detect a greater range of smells. Besides this, our nostrils are moist. Continuous breathing can make them dry. Hence, when we breathe through one nostril, the other nostril gets time to become moist again. Hmm. <laughs> huh? What is color blindness? <laughs> a color festival! <laughs> no. Huh? Color blindness or color deficiency is a vision problem. <laughs> now, our eyes have light sensitive cells called rods and cones. <laughs> Can I put ice cream on these cones? <laughs> oh, you are just unbelievable. <laughs> Rods are responsible for black and white oh. vision. They do not detect color, whereas cones detect color. There are three types <laughs> of cones. One cone perceives oh. red light, another perceives green, and the third perceives blue. Together, these cones help oh. us to see the whole spectrum of colors. Now, in some cases, when one or more types of cones do not work properly, it causes oh. color blindness. <laughs> People with such deficiency have a difficulty in distinguishing between certain colors or shades. For example, in red-green color blindness, oh. the apple tree may appear like this. <laughs> Topic: Latent heat of vaporization. Why do wet clothes feel cold? Because... Because... Uh, I don't know. It is because of latent heat of vaporization. 
Latent heat of vaporization <laughs> is the amount of heat energy required to change a unit mass of liquid into vapor. <laughs> now, the value of latent heat of vaporization of water is very high. Is it higher than Mount Everest? No. The latent heat of vaporization of water is about 22.6 times 10 to the fifth joules per kilogram. Oops, this means it is smaller. Oh. Please listen. <laughs> this means only one kilogram of water requires 22.6 times 10 to the fifth joules of heat energy to change to vapor. <laughs> now, huh? when we wear wet clothes, the water present in them absorbs quite a lot of latent heat from our body and evaporates into the atmosphere, making us feel cold. 